The following are the objectives for this lesson. The goal for this lesson is to help you recognize subsets and use the notation or this notation here. And then recognize proper subsets and use this notation. Also, we will help you determine the number of subsets of a set and help you apply concepts of subsets and equivalent sets to infinite set. Now this notation here, this notation is the notation that we use to express a subset or to denote a subset. Now this expression, this means that A is a subset of B. Now A is a subset of B if every element in A is also an element in B. That means if all elements in A can be found in the set B. Now this notation here means that A is not a subset of B. So this one, if you have this slanted line here, that means that A is not a subset of B. Now A is not a subset of B if there is at least one element in A. So if you can find at least one member in A, that is not an element of B. Therefore, set A is not a subset of B. Again, if there is just at least one element in A, that is that does not belong to B, then A is said to be not a subset to B. Therefore, every set is a subset of itself, meaning a set would contain itself. So every set, take note of this important fact, every set is a subset of itself. So to understand more of the symbols, these symbols here, this is the subset symbol and the not subset symbol, we will consider the following statement. So write either this or this notation here in the blank to form a true statement, okay? So you compare, is A here a subset to B? or not a subset to B. So to determine whether A is a subset of B, all you need to do is examine all the entries in A, all the elements in A, and make sure that all of these elements can also be found in B. Notice that all elements one, three, five, seven, are also elements of set B. So you see one here, three, five, and seven. So therefore, A is a subset of B. And the corresponding notation that we're going to use is this notation here. Now consider this example here. A is X such that X is a letter in the word proof. So B is a set of all Y such that Y is a letter in the word roof. Is A a subset to B? A blank B. What does that mean? It means that are all elements here in A members or elements in set B? What are the elements in A? So you just have to list down the distinct members or the distinct elements of set A. So if you're going to list down all the elements in A, this will be P, R, O, F. Take note, you just have to list down the elements once. Now for set B, if you're going to list down the elements, you have R, O, F. Now you notice that you have an element here, P, that is a member in A but not a member in B. So therefore, A is not a subset of B. So therefore, the notation that we're going to use is the one with a slanted line. So A is not a subset of B. Now let's look at the notation we're going to use for proper subset. 
So this notation here is the notation that we're going to use to indicate that A is a proper subset of B. Now A is a proper subset of B if set A is a subset of B and sets A and B are not equal. Okay, so if you take out the possibility that A and B are not equal, then you use this symbol here. So this symbol is used to express that A is a proper subset of B. That means that A is a subset of B and A and B are not equal. Now let's consider the following example. Write the subset notation or proper subset notation or both in the blank to form a true statement. Now consider the set A. This set A is set of all people that live in San Francisco. And B is the set of people that live in California. We want to consider is A a subset of B? When you say subset, meaning if a person live in San Francisco also live in California, that's correct. So this is a subset. A is a subset of B. What about this notation here? We use this notation when we indicate that A is not equal to B. Is San Francisco the same as California? No, San Francisco is just a city in California. So they're not the same. They're not equal. These two sets are not equal. So therefore, we would write both of these symbols here. Next, if A is defined to be the set 2, 4, 6, 8, and B is the set 2, 8, 4, 6, what is the answer? Is it subset or proper subset? Now, all of the elements in A are also in B, but they just have different orders. So if you look at this one, the 2 is here, the 4 is there, and 6 and 8. These two sets are actually equal. They have exactly the same distinct elements. So therefore, the only thing that would hold here is this subset notation here. And so this is a fact that you need to remember. For any set B, the empty set is a subset of B. So B could be an empty set. So you know that a set is a subset to itself. So therefore, for any B, the empty set is a subset. While for any B other than the empty set, the empty set is a proper subset to B. Because if B is non-empty, then the empty set and B are not, if we take out the possibility that they are equal. So again, if B is any set, then an empty set is a subset to B. And if B is any other set that is not empty, the empty set is a proper subset of B. Now let's look at the connection between the number of elements of a given set to the number of subsets of that set. So let's begin with an empty set. So if you have an empty set, the number of elements is zero. Therefore, the number of distinct subsets is just one. The subset of an empty set is just itself. Take note, the default subset are itself and the empty set. We're looking at an empty set here, so itself and the empty set are just the same. So for an empty set, we only have one subset, which is itself. Now, for a set that contains one element A here, the number of elements is just one. So the number of subsets of this set here is itself and the empty set. So therefore, the total subsets is equal to two. For the given set here, A and B, we have two elements in that set. Okay, the number of elements here is two, and the number of subset will be itself. That's a default, itself. 
the empty set, and the set containing A, and the set containing B. So all in all, we have four subsets of a set that contains two elements. Now, the set containing three elements, these are the subsets of that set. We have itself and the empty set. That is always a default. And also a set containing two elements. So A, B, A, C, and then B, C. And then the set that contains only one element, A, the set containing B, the set containing C. So all in all, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight subsets. So we have eight subsets for a set that has three elements. Now, if you look at the pattern here, look at the pattern here. We begin with eight. Eight is actually two cube. Now four is also a power of two. Four is two squared, while two is two one. Now if you look at that one, you see that the number of elements here is three, and the two is also being raised to three. Number of elements here is 2, and now 2 is being raised to 2. Number of elements here is 1, and we have 2 to 1. Therefore, what do you think is 1? 1 is just 2 to the 0. So with this, if we're trying to connect the number of elements to the number of subsets of any given set, the number of subsets of a set with n elements is just 2 to the n. So that's how we get this formula here, where n is the number of elements in a given set. And the number of proper subsets of a set with n elements is 2 to the n minus 1. So you just have to remove itself. There are two default subsets in any given self. It is itself and the empty set. So we'll just have to take out the set itself. And therefore, we get the number of proper subsets, the number of proper subsets of a given set. So that's how we actually derive the formula 2 to the n, where n is the number of elements of a set. So using the formula that we have derived, let's use that to find the number of subsets and the number of proper subsets of the given sets here. So for instance, for letter A, we have here a set that has five elements, one, two, three, four, five, five elements. So therefore, the number of subsets is just two to the fifth while the number of proper subsets is just 2 to the 5th minus 1. Now, 2 to the 5th is equal to 32. So therefore, the number of proper subsets is just equal to 32 minus 1, which is 31. Now, for letter B, the set here of natural numbers between 9 to 15. So all you need to do is Identify the number of elements, the cardinality of this set here. What are the members of this set? So how many elements do you have in this given set here? It would help if you list down the elements. We start with 9, and then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then you end at 15 because of the equality sign here. The equality sign here means that you end at 15 and you begin at 9. So there's where you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You have 7 elements of that set. So therefore, there are 2 to the 7, which is equal to 128 subsets. 
and there is just 128 minus one proper subsets, and that is equal to 127. Okay, 128 minus one is 127. So you have 127 proper subsets. Just uh, as a food for your thought, we know that the set of natural numbers is infinity, like we cannot count it actually. If a number is uncountable, we say that its cardinality is aleph null. So therefore, using the formula that we had, therefore we know that the set of natural numbers will have 2 to the aleph null subsets, and therefore 2 to the aleph null minus 1 proper subsets. Now if you see here, this 2 to the aleph null is even greater than this aleph null here. And then we'll just denote that one by x sub 1. So x sub 1 is greater than x sub 0. So this aleph null here, this cardinality of the natural numbers, that is the smallest transfinite cardinal number in an infinite hierarchy of different infinities.